In today's video, we are going to go over seven different examples for dimensionless analysis, and we're going to be analyzing the units as they come out of the equations for seven different examples. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Get all the excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube channel, I see that so many people who watch our videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Give it a thumbs up, leave a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials that you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. We are looking for examples, practice problems with all the solutions, notes, games, puzzles, and a bunch of different activities that you can do with PHET Interactive Simulation. It's all there. The link is in the description below. And this is going to be part one for this video. And we are going to be talking about dimensional analysis. And we're going to start off nice and simple with velocity and acceleration. And you should know the units for velocity are meters per second. The units for acceleration are meters per second squared. And how do we get those units out of our equations when we're doing calculations? for velocity and acceleration. Velocity, as you know, uh, formally the definition is the change in position over the change in time, which is really just the distance divided by the time in most cases. So we can just say the distance or the change in position is really measured in meters. The time is measured in seconds, and therefore we get meters per second. And that's what that means. It's how far or how many meters you go each second. Now, for acceleration, it's a little bit more complicated because most people might know it's just meters per second squared. But what does that really mean? Well, acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. And as we said here, the units for velocity are meters per second. And then we're going to divide that by the time, which is going to be in seconds. And so you can see we get meters per second per second, because that's really what acceleration is. It's the change in velocity. It's how much your velocity changes every second. Now, we usually don't write it like this. We simplify this, because we really we have a fraction over a fraction, because this is really like s over 1. And we don't write it like that. Of course, we write meters per second squared. How do we get that? Well, we're going to go 1 over s and multiply 1 over s, by, or each, each half of that fraction by 1 over s. The ones on the bottom will cancel because s times 1 and 1 times s is just s over s, and that simplifies to 1 or that cancels out. If we multiply across here, you can see that now we get meters per second squared because second times second is meters per second squared. So that's the units, and that's how we get meters per second squared for acceleration because it's really your change in velocity per second. Okay? Okay. What's next? Well, next is going to be Newton's second law with force. And most people know that Newton's is the unit for force. And a lot of times in my classes, even I say, oh, if you do the calculations and you're calculating for force, you'll get Newton's. If you're doing something else, you're calculating for mass, you'll get kilograms. But it's good to know where those units come from. And that's what I'm trying to show you here in this video. So let's see, how do we get Newton's out of this? And really, what is a Newton? So let's see, we have that the force is equal to the mass is going to be measured in kilogram. That's the base unit in kilograms. And the acceleration we just said before is meters per second squared. And that is what a Newton is. A Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. Or it is the amount of force needed to accelerate a one kilogram mass and give it an acceleration of one meter per second squared. So take a one kilogram mass and change its velocity one meter per second for every second. Now, uh, that sounds, it, it does sound a little complicated, and a lot of people, I think, don't understand what that means conceptually, but that's what a Newton is. It's the force needed to accelerate a mass, okay? Because that's what forces do. They, or unbalanced forces do, at least they change the motion of objects, okay? They accelerate them. Okay, so that's for force. Now, let's see what's now. Okay, now we have energy and work. And most people, again, probably know that maybe the units for energy and work is a joule. But what is a joule? A joule is really a newton meter. A newton meter is a joule. It's the force needed. Uh, it's, it's the amount of work you do when you apply a force through one newton. Okay, one newton force through one meter or over one meter. Now, the most common uh, uh, examples you might see are work, force times distance, Potential energy, which is mgh, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in the height. And the kinetic energy. That's energy and work. And energy and work all have the units for joule. Where, where does that come from? 
Well, for force, it's relatively straightforward because it's a Newton meter, and when you apply force over distance, then you uh, 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 have a Newton for the force and a meter for the distance, and that's a joule. Okay. Now, what about how do we get joules out of this, out of MGH for potential energy? Well, the mass is kilogram. G is meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity. And the distance or the change in the height is M. So we said earlier on the previous slide that a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So this is a Newton and this is a meter. All right. It's almost like it's also a kilogram meter squared, second squared. We usually don't say that because we like to separate out Newton, Newton meter, which shows it's a Newton times a meter, and that's also therefore going to be a joule, okay? Because this Newton is, this is a Newton, the units for Newtons, and then we have the meter left over. Okay, now for kinetic energy, okay, the ma one half, we don't really put that in there because that doesn't have a units, obviously. So this is a kilogram for the mass, and this is velocity squared. If we have velocity squared, we're going to square the meters, and we're going to square the seconds, so we get meters squared over seconds squared. And that's basically what we have up here. If we have meters squared, okay, when we multiply mass a uh, meter times a meter, we get meters squared over seconds squared. So this is a Newton meter. There's an extra meter up there from the Newton, because a Newton is just meters, and this is meters squared. And that's how you get joules out of that one also. Okay? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. I think it gives you a little deeper understanding of the problem and the concept if you understand, you know, where the units come from and what the units actually mean and not just that work is a jewel. What is a jewel? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now, we're going to talk about another one for force. And, of course, this one is Newton's law of universal gravitation, which looks like this, that the force is equal to G, which is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And then we're going to multiply that times both of the masses, M1 and M2. And then it's divided by the square of the distance between them. All right. Now, you got to remember the masses have to be in kilograms. The distance is, that has to be, uh, uh, the distance between them has to be in meters. And then you also have to know the units for the gravitational constant. The units for the gravitational constant are Newton, meter squared, kilogram squared. So this is the units for the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And then we're going to multiply that by these units are both kilograms. And on the bottom, it's meter squared. So I put down meter, meter. I could have just put down meter squared. Okay, because, uh, 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 and that'll cancel. Those, that meter squared will cancel with this meter squared. And this two kilograms becomes kilogram squared, and that cancels with that one. So when we cancel everything out, we're just left with newtons, and that's what we want. Okay? And that means the force is measured in newtons, and that's how we get newtons out of that. Okay? Whether you use, whether you use Newton's second law or Newton's law of universal gravitation, you get newtons out of it because you're calculating for force. Okay? Okay. That one was a little bit more complicated. And now we're going to try some with the kinematic equations because this is where a lot of times, you know, you have, you have more than one term in the equation and you just tell students, okay, well, velocity is meters per second, so you get meters per second. Well, how do you get meters per second from that equation? When you have the velocity, is the initial velocity, okay, this is the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. Well, the initial velocity is meters per second. And then we multiply that times the acceleration, which is the units for acceleration of meter per second squared, as we said, and the time is the units, it's the seconds. Okay, then you can see that one of these seconds is going to cancel, this seconds is going to cancel with one of these two like that. And then you just get meters per second plus meter. And because they have like units, you can just add them up and you get velocity final, or the velocity is meters per second. Okay? Okay. Let's see, what's, we have one more, for the, like this one. Okay, this one is supposed to come out, we're finding the displacement or the distance, so it's supposed to come out in meters. Well, how do you get meters from out of all of this stuff? It's not that complicated if you write the units out and you cancel them properly. The velocity initial is meters per second, the time is in seconds, plus one half, I left that off. Of course, the acceleration again is meters per second squared, and the time is squared, so it's the time squared, second squared. Well, those two seconds cancel with those, with those, with each other, and those two seconds squared cancel, so now you're just left with meters and meters, so you add them up and you get some number of meters. All right? Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? Fascinating. Okay, now we got another one, and this is for the period. Now, the question is, what are the base units for time? Okay, 
and what's the, what's, what units should come out of this. I mean, you might think it's minutes or hours or something like that, but the base units for time will, should come out of this, and we should see that the length, that this says that the period of the pendulum is equal to the square root. Okay, it should be 2 pi, but I left the 2 pi off because we were all we're really interested in is the length and well, the, the values that have units. So this is the length is meters, and g is meters per second squared. Well, this cancels with this meter, right? This is actually, this is like a fraction on top of a fraction. We could write it, I think I did that, like m over 1. Okay, if I take m over 1, that's what on the top half. On the bottom half, it's meters per second. Well, this meter cancels with this meter like that. And then we can simplify this fraction because now we have like 1 over 1 over 1 over second squared. We multiply the top and the bottom half, the bottom half here, the top half here of this fraction as multiplied by second squared over 1. Then this will cancel with that. And then you have left just second squared over 1, which simplifies to second squared. If you take the square root of second squared, you just end up in seconds. Now that was fascinating but not as fascinating as the very last one we're going to do. This is an equation you can use to calculate the orbital period, like how the orbital period, how long it takes for the Earth to go around the sun, or the moon to go around, right? The Earth goes around the sun, right? And the moon goes around the Earth, or any other uh, orbital period for some object that's, object that's orbiting around a central mass. And this is the equation, which is the square root is 4 pi, Q, 4 pi r cubed, the distance between them. G is the gravitational constant, and this is M, the mass of the central object. Okay? The, ma the period is not dependent upon the mass of the uh, orbiting object, just the mass of the central object. So we can put all the units in. Okay, 4 pi doesn't have any units, but this is R is the distance. The unit for the distance is the meter cubed. Now this is once again the units for the gravitational constant. Newton meter squared, kilogram squared, and this is kilogram. This is the, this mass right here. So the first thing we can simplify is this squared, m squared, is going to cancel with two of these three. And then the kilogram and the kilogram squared, we're going to cancel one of those. And then we're left over so far with meter, this meter, over Newton, uh, meter over Newton over kilogram. Right? This is the top half of this fraction. This is the one fraction. This is a separate fraction. All right. Now we we want we want to get time out of this, but there's no time in here. But there is t there's no time here. Uh, there's no seconds here, but inside the Newton there's seconds. So we're going to open up. We're going to blow up the Newton. Okay. So this meter is this meter, and this is the units for the Newton kilogram meter per second. Right. It's the force needed to take a one kilogram object and give an acceleration of one meter per second per second. All right. And then we have kilogram here. All right, so we have like a fraction on a fraction on a fraction. Got a lot of fractions here, but it's going to simplify out pretty easily because this is meters are going to cancel. They're both on the top half of those fractions. This kilogram is going to cancel with that kilogram. And then we're left with, I kind of show this, this M because it canceled. There's still something up there. It's one over one. There's a one up there. All right, and then these kilograms cancel, so we're just left with 1 over s squared, and we can simplify this, because of course we're not going to leave it like that. Again, multiply by s squared over 1, and the bottom half of that fraction cancels, and then you're left with, you know, think about how the math works, this over 1. Well, this over 1 is just this, and this is s squared over 1, which is just s squared. So the period is going to cancel out with the, well, the square is going to cancel out with the square root and you're left with the seconds. Okay, now if you're calculating the orbital period of the Earth around the Sun, you, you might think, oh, that what would come out of that equation the, for the period might be days or minutes or hours or years. You wouldn't really think it would be seconds, but seconds is the base unit in the metric system, so that's what comes out. So when you calculate the orbital period, I don't know what one year is in seconds. I didn't figure it out ahead of time. But, you know, some number of thousands of seconds you're going to get. And then you can convert it if your teacher wants to know minutes, days, or hours, or years like that. Okay? But remember, out of this equation come seconds. And you get that by that fascinating derivation. Okay, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it very helpful interesting, informative. If you did, don't forget to do all of the following five things. Please subscribe to our channel, Step-by-Step Step Science. Get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please click the notification bell. Please give us a nice positive comment. Please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to please share this video. 
Thank you so much for watching. And that is right. We will see you in the next video.